This is my digital story of Houston, a city which is located in Texas. Houston was founded in 1836 near the banks of Buffalo Bayou, now known as Allen's Landing, and incorporated as a city on June 5th in the year 1837. The city was named after former General Sam Houston, who was president of the Republic of Texas. The burgeoning port and railroad industry, combined with all discovery in 1901, has induced continual searches in the city's population. In the mid-20th century, Houston became the home of the Texas Medical Center, the world's largest concentration of healthcare and research institutions, and NASA's Johnson Space Center, where the Mission Control Center located. In my digital story, I will be looking at the concept of climate change in Houston. I will firstly look at the possible causes of climate change as a result of carbon emissions in the city. I will also evaluate the consequences or effects of climate change. I will be discussing the ND gain index of the country where Houston is situated in for the purpose of its vulnerability and readiness to climate change. Lastly, I will be discussing the usage of stabilization wages as a method of reducing carbon emissions in Houston. Climate change is the long-term change in the Earth's climate, especially a change due to an increase in the average atmospheric temperature. Average temperatures have risen across the U.S. since the late 19th century, with most of the increase occurring since 1970, the hottest year on record for the contiguous United States, including Texas, was 2012. There are two main causes of climate change, natural causes and human causes. Both natural and human factors change Earth's climate. Before humans, changes in climate resulted entirely from natural causes, such as changes in Earth's orbit, changes in solar activity, and volcanic eruptions. Wedge 3 Houston could achieve a wedge of emission savings if it were to double fuel efficiency of all cars projected for 2060 from 30 mpg to 60 mpg. Looking at the effects of climate change, flooding is very common and vulnerable in Houston. However, climate change poses a great threat by worsening it. With clay soil and tabletop flood tearing, Houston has endured flooding for generations. Its 1,700 miles of man-made channels struggle to dispatch storm runoff to the Gulf of Mexico. Now, the nation's fourth largest city is being overwhelmed with more frequent and more destructive floods. The latest calamity occurred April 18, killing eight people and causing tens of millions of dollars in damage. The worsening floods and simple acts of nature are just costly local concerns. Climate change affects water sources. Several major river basins lie in part or entirely within Texas. Unless increased temperatures are coupled with a strong increase in rainfall, water could become scarce. A warmer and drier climate would lead to greater evaporation, as much as a 35% decrease in stream flow, and less water for recharging groundwater aquifers. Additionally, climate change could give rise to more frequent and intense rainfall, resulting in flash flooding. In Texas, agriculture is a $12.6 billion annual industry, two-thirds of which comes from livestock, especially cattle. About 25% of the crop acreage is irrigated. The major crops in the state are cotton, wheat, and sorghum. Climate change could reduce cotton and sorghum yields by 2 to 15 percent and wheat yields by 43 to 68 percent, leading to changes in acres farmed and production. Ecosystems The vast area within Texas includes a great diversity of ecosystems, from forests to grasslands to semi arid shrublands to extensive coastal and inland wetlands. In Texas, Climate change could weaken and stress trees, making them more susceptible to pine bark, 
beetle outbreaks, semi-arid grasslands and shrublands are very sensitive to changes in rainfall season and in the amount of rainfall and could be affected adversely by warmer, drier conditions. Since the 1980s, Houston preferred approach to flood control besides improving drainage has been to build thousands of detention ponds, concrete line pools that capture storm water and pipe out slowly. But developers don't build enough flood water retention into their projects and areas that novel flooded before now flood in the smallest event. The Houston Advanced Research Center recently launched a Texas Climate Initiative website as a resource for educators policymakers and the general public to access current research and information on the impact of climate change in Texas. Houston is the most populous city in Texas and the fourth most populous city in the United States. With a census estimated 2014 population of 2,239 million within a land area of 599,6 square miles, which is 1,553 kilometers squared. It is also the largest city in the southern United States as well as the seat of Harris County. Now, let us take a closer look at the end gain index of the country in which Houston is situated. Houston is situated in the United States. A country's ND gain index score is composed of a vulnerability score and a readiness score. Vulnerability measures a country's exposure, sensitivity, and ability to adapt to the negative impact of climate change. ND gain measures the overall vulnerability by considering vulnerability in six life supporting sectors namely, food, water, health, ecosystem service, human habitat, and infrastructure. Here, United States ranks number 11. The low vulnerability score and high readiness score of the United States places it in the lower right quadrant of the end gain metrics. Adaptation challenges still exist, but the United States is well positioned to adapt. The United States is the 8th least vulnerable country and the 15th most ready country. And developing nation and international plans to provide a clean and sustainable energy infrastructure for future development, the stabilization wedges approach is essential. The stabilization wedges concept is a simple tool for conveying the emission cuts that can be made to avoid dramatic climate change. Can Houston prevent a doubling of CO2 by keeping emissions flat for the next 50 years? Let's take a look on how Houston can use the stabilization wedges. Wedge 1. Texas coal plants are some of the worst polluters in the country, emitting a whopping 2,239 pounds of carbon dioxide per megawatt hour of energy produced. One megawatt hour can power 500 typical Texas homes for an hour during mild weather. With better technology, and newer equipment, the Environmental Protection Agency thinks U.S. coal plants can become 6% more efficient on average by 2020 and stay that efficient through 2030. Wedge 2. Fuel switching. Switch from coal to natural gas. This is the most significant and most controversial aspect of the Environmental Protection Agency's proposed rules. In 2012, Texas coal plants generated 139 million megawatt hours of electricity. The Environmental Protection Agency thinks almost half of that could be pushed out by natural gas, a much cleaner fuel source in the coming decades. Natural gas plants emit only 837 pounds of carbon dioxide per megawatt hour of electricity produced. This step along with more efficient coal plants could save about 100 billion pounds of carbon dioxide emissions per year, the Environmental Protection Agency says. Wedge 3 Houston could achieve a wedge of emission savings if it were to double fuel efficiency of all cars projected for 2060 
from 30 mpg to 60 mpg wedge 4 houston could gain a wedge by increasing energy efficiency measures to reduce electricity consumption overall this is another area where the Environmental Protection Agency and many experts believe Texas has a lot of room to grow. The Environmental Protection Agency estimates Texas could cut 1,78% of its current energy demand through efficiency measures, such as using better light bulbs and appliances and upgrading buildings. Continuing that pace through 2029 would yield 10% savings. The agency says reducing the need for coal and gas generation. Energy experts say consumers have played a major role in slowing the growth in, e in energy demand in Houston. Wedge 5. Solar energy. Solar energy includes direct radiation in which energy is harnessed directly from sunlight via PV conversion and thermal and indirect forms of energy such as biomass, wind, hydro, ocean, thermal, ocean currents and wave energy caused by the effects of sun up on earth. The advantages of solar energy are inexhaustible fuel source, no pollution is caused, it is often an excellent supplement to other renewable sources, it is versatile meaning that it is used for powering items as diverse as solar cars and satellites. Wedge 6. Biofuels. Biofuels are liquids derived from crops and agricultural waste. They are a proven alternative to oil for transportation and 30% of American fuel is already enriched with ethanol improving performance and reducing tailpipe emissions. Biofuels are renewable and can be produced in every state in the U.S. and are poised to significantly reduce the amount of oil that needs to be imported. The technology to refine cellulosic biomass into ethanol will contribute considerably to U.S. fuel security. Therefore, for Houston to gain one more wedge, it will be required to increase today's global ethanol production by about 12 times, making it sustainable. Wedge 7. Building Efficiency Commercial and residential buildings consume about one-third of all U.S. energy and two-thirds of U.S. electricity and account for more carbon emissions than any other sector. A study by the California Sustainable Building Task Force found that an upfront investment of 2%, the average cost premium, in green building design results in average savings of at least 10 times the initial investment over a 20-year period. Cutting emissions by 25% in all new and existing residential and commercial buildings through greening buildings and homes. Lastly, wedge 8, wind power. One quarter of total land in the U.S. is suitable for wind capacity to produce electricity as cheaply as natural gas or coal at today's prices. In principle, the wind resources of Kansas, North Dakota, and Texas could provide all the electricity needs for the entire U.S. Wind power could be the least expensive of all the new electricity producing resources. The advantages of wind power are it is an inexhaustible fuel source. Also, it is often an excellent supplement to other renewable sources. To gain a wedge of emission saving from displacing coal-based electricity, Houston would need to scale up current wind capacity by a factor of 10. Houston can prevent a doubling carbon dioxide if it can keep emissions flat for the next 50 years. Keeping emissions flat will require cutting projected carbon output by about 8 billion tons per year.